In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the shapes that comprise the uh, 3D model of Ontario's Paleozoic geology. So, uh, the model is obviously made up of uh, a lot of different layers, which uh, you can see visually here, indicated by the different colors. Or if you uh, turn the uh, layer on its side, you can take a look at how these layers are stacked. Um, to get some more information about each of these individual layers, we uh, come to the, the, the shapes uh, box here, which contains information on all of the different layers that comprise the model. Uh, it seems like a lot, but don't be overwhelmed. Um, a lot of them uh, are a part of similar categories, so you'll be able to navigate them fairly easily. Uh, so what we're going to start with here is the shape category. So um, when you have a lot of shapes, or in this case layers, that are a part of the same category, um, you can see them uh, indicated by uh, a certain icon and then uh, a specific title. So in this case, um, uh, topography is, is just a single shape, uh, color is a single shape, um, the towns of Ontario, that's a single shape, but something like um, all of these formations, so the, the rock units that comprise uh, the model, um, all of these are part of the lithostrat model bedrock. So you can see that there's plenty of layers, uh, and uh, un if, if you go past all of those layers, we now get into, um, for example, faults. So you have um, a little icon indicating the fault category and all of these different fault planes. Going even further, um, you have this, uh, the same thing with lakes. So you have a little icon um, for, for all of the different uh, bodies of water in Ontario. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's not super complicated, um, but different shapes belong to different categories. Um, so one of the first things that you can do is um, you can toggle the uh, shape on or off. So for example, if we come down here and we take a look at the kettle point formation. So if we move the layer here, so the kettle point formation is in this area. Currently, this eye um, is toggled on. So this shows us the shape. But if we turn it off, you'll notice that a large chunk of the dark green layer here uh, has vanished. That's because this uh, green layer here is the kettle point layer. So when we uh, hit the eye, it toggles it off. Uh, when it comes to the opacity, you can also, you can also set the, the opacity of the layer as well. So for example, if I want to see the kettle point layer, um, kettle point formation, but I don't want it to be as opaque, I can turn this down and you'll notice in the layer that it seems to um, fade more and more until I reduce the opacity to zero. So here, um, this is the same thing as uh, having the um, uh, formation toggled off you can see it doesn't. There's no difference, but as soon as we increase the opacity again, it becomes more apparent uh, where the uh, kettle point uh, formation is. Some other things that you can do here, um, you can show faces. So what this does is uh, is very similar. It will just toggle uh, the uh, the unit on or off. Um, you also have the smooth faces, and this is interesting. So this is something that um, is uh, more interesting at uh, a small scale level. Uh, it's more apparent. So for example, if I zoom in here to the kettle point unit, you can see it's it's a little bit pixelated. But if I click on the uh, smooth faces option, it makes it uh, smooth, uh, as you'd expect. Um, just uh, maybe gives you a little bit uh, uh, more visually appealing uh, look at some of the units. Uh, some other things that you can do if you're interested, this button here will show edges. So this may look like a bit of a mess, but if you zoom in, we can see what's actually happening. So all of the polygons that comprise the kettle point layer, um, you can see the edges of each one of those polygons here. Um, again, if you zoom out, it just looks like a big mess. Um, so it's it's not really super useful for uh, for the purpose of these uh, of these labs. So we can toggle that off. Um, when it comes to selecting layers, so there's there's a way that you can do this. There's, there's a couple different ways you can do this. So um, you can uh, hold down control and select multiple layers. So if I select these layers, I, I'm holding down control and I'm selecting all these layers. Um, once I let go of control, they're all highlighted still. And so what I could do then is if I click one setting for one of them, uh, the setting will apply to all of them. So if I don't want to see the kettle, if I, don't, if I don't want to see any of these, I want to toggle them all off, I can click the show shape button and you'll notice they've all disappeared. 
Similarly, because I still have them all highlighted, if I click it again, they've all reappeared. Uh, in order to clear a selection, uh, you can simply click uh, a single layer uh, that isn't already highlighted. And you'll notice now the only thing that uh, is selected is, is just one of whatever I click. Um, you can also select by category. So for example, this litho strat model bedrock category, um, if I select the kettle point group and uh, I want all of the litho strat model bedrock uh, units selected, all I have to do is double click on one of them. So if I double click kettle point, you'll notice that all of the litho strat model bedrock um, units are selected. None of the faults, uh, none of these, it's, it's just these units. And so what I can do is because they're all selected, if I zoom out here, you'll notice that when I click show shape, it's, it unselects them all. It still leaves the bodies of water because those weren't selected. Um, they're not part of the little strap model bedrock category. Um, and then similarly, I can make them reappear by clicking on them again. Um, this looks a little bit different, you might notice, and that's because um, this model here, the overburden, um, is normally not selected. So in order to uh, get rid of this, uh, I have to show shape, and it, it uh, toggles the overburden layer off. Um, once you uh, are comfortable with this, what you can do is you can go in and you can click on individual units um, in the model, and it'll give you some information down here uh, about each uh, about each unit. This this isn't just exclusive to the uh, the bedrock units. You can also click on uh, the uh, the bodies of water, and it'll tell you a little bit about the body of water that you've selected, um, or um, any of these other features that are not bodies of water um, or bedrock units. So for example, if we want to turn on uh, a map of all of the towns in Ontario, we can toggle that on, and now you can see. Um, all of the, uh, the major uh, towns in Ontario uh, have appeared on the map. And so we can uh, go in here and we can click, say, Kitchener. And this will just give us a little bit of information about uh, this point um, right here. But we'll turn those uh, back off for now. The final tool you might be interested in using is the measure tool. And this is going to allow us to measure distance and also the thickness of the geologic layers in the model. So this tool can be accessed by clicking the ruler icon in the toolbar. And uh, clicking and dragging anywhere in the model will uh, reveal the distance here uh, of the line that you've drawn. To use this to measure uh, the, the layers in the geologic model, uh, we have to use a little bit, uh, a little bit of nuance um, in order to get the uh, true thickness of these layers. So the first thing we'll start with is uh, by taking a perspective uh, that allows us to view the layers uh, head on without any, uh, any additional angle. Uh, you'll notice, even if we take a look at this violet layer here, um, you'll notice that the, the layer itself uh, is not consistent in its dip. Uh, it varies. And it's important that when measuring the thickness of the layer, that you're measuring the uh, true thickness or as close to the true thickness as possible and not the apparent thickness. Uh, and the reason this is the case is uh, you might think instinctively that um, the, uh, say, something that is the true thickness uh, like this, where you can see we have a bit of an angle uh, indicated here. This is an angle of about 14 degrees. Uh, you can see this is about 430 meters uh, thick. Um, however, if we adjust that angle uh, even slightly and just go straight down, right, at, say, 90 degrees, uh, you'll notice that that change in angle went from almost 14 degrees to 90 degrees. Um, and, and that change in angle is, is due to the vertical exaggeration of the model. Um, and you'll notice that this is now 106 uh, meters instead of uh, what we had measured here, which was closer to 430 so oftentimes, um, you'll notice that what might seem like a slight change in angle results in a very drastic change in, in thickness um, due to the uh, uh, um, vertical exaggeration of the model. So it's really important to try to measure uh, as perpendicular as possible uh, to the uh, to the the dip of uh, the dip in orientation uh, of the bed that you're measuring. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I hope this has provided some helpful insight into how to use some of the tools um, that are provided in the LeapFrog viewer to explore the uh, geologic model. Um, good luck with the completion of your labs.